Hello, good evening, and welcome back to another um, cr uh, Crafting with Sandra. It's not my usual Wednesday evening, as I had a very, um, very hectic few days, and I needed to have some time to prepare and look after my new guests. So, I am using the annual catalogue again, and I'm going to be using the set that I used on Sunday night on my Facebook Live. So, if you were watching then, I will remind you of the card that I made. So, let's just get down onto the desk. Oh, there we go, and uh, move you across, and let's get crafting. So, um, the annual catalogue started at the beginning of this month, and I'm going to we'll start with the card, just refresh on the card that I used from Sunday. So, this one here is done with the Bottles Happiness. Now, this was a new set, a new delivery, if you like, um, for me. I hadn't um, had it many, many days. Um, so this is the bottle of happiness and it comes together with a punch that punches out this image here. So you have an outline and you have the solid image in the middle. Now tonight I'd like to do a couple of uh, different variations on a similar card, but I'm gonna be introducing you to another new product in with our ink colors. So I'm gonna flick you through to the catalog here with the notes and um, note cards and envelopes in the tea boutique. Now this is um, a set of 20 card bases and envelopes and they obviously all come with envelopes and these are beautifully put together. These, This is the card and these are the envelopes. So they crease along here and your recipient will receive it already pre-decorated. And I just think they are absolutely gorgeous. And then the card front has, has got the same pattern carry through and plain bases now these all come i'm going to go through the whole five colors so we have sweet sorbet we have the parakeet party I'll take that one out and fold that one over Oops. and that continues that stripy pattern throughout and then on the front we have that same similar design going through then we have the um, Tahitian Tide. I just slotted these in here just to keep them together. But that is the Tahitian Tide. And going through to the front. And the Orchid Oasis. I think these are absolutely gorgeous. They're pre-done, ready to use and just ready to decorate. So this is the other one. And the decoration through here. That picks up some of the fr um, fresh freesia as well. And then this was the one I was going to start with tonight using the starry sky and the envelope that goes with that. Okay, and again, the um, t um, fresh freesia coming through on there as well. So I'm gonna leave that one out to use this evening. Get those safely out of the ink. Um, and like I say, they come in a pack of 20 and they go with the bottled happiness. I didn't put a marker in for this one. Um, I've moved my day today, so I don't know who's joining me on a Friday night. I thought this was fairly near the beginning. There we go. So this is the Bottled Happiness Bundle. Okay, some lovely samples up here. Beautiful images, and I will show you again how we do these images. So I'll pop that out of the way. So to start with, I'm going to... I'll put the envelope out of the way, and I'll the note card for now. We won't need to decorate those. And we'll bring on my stamparatus. And I'm also going to cut a piece of Whisper White card to go as a panel on the front of my card. Now, I like to use the note cards quite a bit. So, if I just bring that back. If I use the note cards quite a bit for my cards, this is a three and a half by five inches. So what I've done today is based a layer that would fit on a note card on its own or onto the centre of a card base. So I'm going to use this as white at three and a quarter by four and three quarters, just quarter of an inch smaller than the note cards. So I'll just bring that onto my trimmer. I'll go four and three quarters by three and one quarter. And take those out of the way. That's just going to be my layer for the card. While I'm here, I will also cut a slight, slightly uh, larger layer to go as a matte layer around here. I've chosen to go away from the in colours and to go for 
um, the garden green on this instance. So I'm gonna cut this to um, four and seven eighths, which is nearly the note card size. So it's just one eighth bigger. Working in inches for those of you who are watching in Imperial. And then this way, I'm gonna do three and three eighths. Just quarter, uh, one eighth bigger. Okay, we don't need that yet, but that's with the trimmer out, that's ready for later. So I'm just gonna check that this goes right on that size before I start. So that's just leaving me a tiny little green border on there. Don't wanna to make too much of a thing of it, but I want to make an accent. So then we will bring my Stamparatus over. You will see I've been playing with some of these on here. Um, just bring it up a little bit. So I've done some um, playing around with these. So I like to mark my um, page here, my, oh, grid mat, um, with a pencil and just mark in that corner. Mark the corner here and mark at the top there. So that's how I work to start with. Oops, this camera is, I think my camera is sagging a little bit. I've had a 10 year old playing with this and it it is swimming it's not staying where it's supposed to be so apologies oh, I'm just trying to get that back in I'll just see that that doesn't move too much for you okay so I've marked where my panel's going to be then I take my nice clean piece of card away and I start with the branches um, first here to put those on and then I pick up the stamp set on here so as I've already done that, I'm going to anchor this down and grab my ink pad. So I have all five of the new ink pads here. Now whilst I'm using the starry sky for the background, I'm actually going a shade lighter and going to Orchid Oasis for the flowers. And I will bring a case on here. Turn that case over just so that they lay nice and flat. And I'm going to just touch that on there like so. Oh, I've used the leaves. I need the garden green. Let's just clean that off. Okay. Hmm, there we go. My stampin' scrub here, my um, chamois. So I will use this one on here. Just tap that all over. And that's the green layer. This is garden green I'm using today. I love the parakeet party, but I do think it's just that little bit too bright for this one. I'm pressing down there well on my image and make sure it's all nice and clean. That's good. So then I'll turn my plate round. Now for my next layer, I would just lay this over here. I placed this earlier to make sure that I had all my pieces in here. Now, when you place your stamp on here, you can actually see where all of these pieces fit into your down your un image underneath. So this is why I have it on a piece of scrap paper under here, in this case my grid sheet, and I can know that that is going to fit because I've done a little sample first. Doing this just makes sure that you don't waste your card and you can be happy with your design. So we've already done that. Our card is up into the corner so we know it's going to be perfectly placed and then we can ink this up on. So we we'll use the oasis that we should have used just now. Okay. Now with a slight variation on this one, if you like to, you can then go to the starry sky, the darker one, and I have used a sponge dauber. I'll just bring my darker sp sponge dauber on. And I've labelled them all on here with my Dymo so that I know that that's going to be. I think that is that camera is dropping, isn't it? We'll try and monitor it. Um, and then I'll just tap that on here. Now, some of the, sh the shapes on here, you might want to do a shade darker. So I like to just tap this on here. And I think I will accent the, mm, the middle, the little, the little fonts on the outside, I think. So if I go over those in a darker shade on each one because you're going darker it won't um, deteriorate your stamp pad itself okay I think that's all of those in there 
there we go so I'll pop that back over there and then I will stamp the image down keeping me ink pads locked and so I will shut that over there and press that down firmly if you watch me regularly you know I use this um, air hockey pusher or puck I think the puck is the disc that you throw down the um, thing and this is the pusher so there is my image so I'm happy with that so I'm going to take that out and pop that to one side now I have um, I'll leave that there and I will come back if we have time to do the next one I'm going to use a different variation on another image I seem to be very cluttered here today so in my next step I'm going to grab a piece of scrap white basic white card again it can be this layer here and I had uh, I did have my foam pad it came out onto the table somewhere so just bear with me We'll be naughty tonight. We won't use the, the sponge. You get a better, with the mat, you do get a better impression. So we will just, I don't know where that's disappeared. So I'm just gonna stamp this ink, the starry sky. Let me see. I'm gonna do this one in the Oasis first and see whether I like that one better or not. So it's just one stamped image, like so. I do like that. And then we'll clean that one off. And then we'll try the starry sky. They are very similar shades, very similar blues, but slightly different. So that's Orchid Oasis. And this one, that is definitely drooping, I'm sorry. Let me just get you back up here. It's not going very well today. That's when you let people play with your equipment. Let's try and tighten those up. See how we go with that. Okay, we'll try that a little bit longer. So go with these two so these are two of my two stamped images okay um, I notice on here that this one has got a little um, bubble on it so that might be something that was sitting on the ink pad so I'm going to just wipe that I can see that there's something just sitting on there so all it takes is a speck of dust just to ruin that image just clean that Because I'm on a different slot today than I normally would, um, it's quite quiet talking to myself and not interacting with people. So there is my clean image now. So let us put a cross through that one. I'm not going to use that one. Now I want to introduce you to something else. I have some clear tape here. Just knock that. So this is clear packing tape and I want to make my bottles look nice and shiny and glossy. So I'm going to take a piece of this tape, put that on the table, no, fall off, and oh, rolled. I'm going to cover this, it's not quite big enough, let's take in a longer piece. To go this way down and starting at one end I'm going to work that down so I have no air bubbles no gaps in there whatsoever okay and that runs all the way down okay then I can cut this off and then because I've done two images I can do the same with the second one so holding that tightly at the top there and working down that image. Don't need to worry too much about the outside because I am going to punch these out. 
Okay, and that nice and smoothly through the middle there. Okay, and let's pop that little edge on my tape. I actually bought this for another project and thought, well, I like the idea of this one. I think that, that will work nicely. Smooth that over. Try not to get stuck to the sellotape. It's actually the thick packing tape if you go looking for it, searching to buy some. It's um, the wide packing tape. So now I'm going to bring on my matching punch. Okay, so we just bring the punch in from the bottom and I want to punch that exactly in the centre. Okay, so get that lined up there and punch that out. Come back to those in a minute. Do the second one and do that one there. there we go. So now we have our lovely glossy. I'm going to bring these up to you. Sorry about the camera tonight, guys. So now what I'm going to do is you can see the nice glossy effect on these. So they look like shiny bottles. I'm just trying to catch that on the camera. So glossy like a bottle would be. And now I'm going to just curl these using my bone folder and just the warmth of my hands. Just bending that over. Okay. And that one like so. And then you've got a nice curved bottle there. So this is going to have a little bit more on the top. That's, this is going to have foam pads, our stamp and dimensionals through the center. Okay, just down the middle there. And then this one exactly the same. So using the heat from my hand, my warmth from my hands, and just gently curving that away. Okay, and then doing the same with this one. Like so and the top. We have a nice little curve on there. So I'm straight away going to get my Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to use some of the edges down the side here. When our stamp on dimensionals, if you use the contents in the middle, the outside edges here have some lovely long strips here. Hello, Julie. Nice to see you. I was feeling a little bit lonely because I've changed my night and it's good to see you there. So all I'm doing with these dimensions is, is cutting some of these into narrow strips. And then I'll grab my tweezers. And my tweezers have to make an appearance. And I'll come down the middle of that bottle all the way down the middle okay through there like so there we go and I'll do the same with this one I will get it ready um, gonna show you how quickly once you've lined up um, images on your stamparatus how you can mass produce your creations there is out of the way and so those are ready to join my card. So here's the card that I cut earlier and my image that I did here. So these could go down straight down onto there. But I'm going to show you one more trick before I place a bottle on here like so. I'm going to show you one more little trick um, with my green card here. So if I clean this down again, Okay, so that's cleaned. I'm going to have my garden green. Now, as children, we all remember singing the 10 green bottles, don't we? So I haven't done 10 green ones yet, but this was my intention. I'm going to stamp these, leaving the small border around the outside, and to stamp these through the centre. Okay, just to give some tone on tone. And I think I'll get three in images out of here. Okay. Let's that 
again. So that's my nice three clear images. This is going to be the border around the outside of my card. So I'm going to bring back my tape and I'm going to place them. I've got to do them this way up because it's not quite wide enough to do them lengthways. So I will do cut a piece there. Make sure to put something on there to catch the end of your tape so you're not searching for it. Because I don't want them to have half over the next one, I am going to cut this roughly the width. Okay, and just check before I lay it down. It's easier to start on the inside one. And place that down there. Okay. Don't worry about the tape going on the edges because what we will do is use this side for the frame. So there's one done. Now I'm going to go again with the other two. So roughly the length of my bottle. Stick that on the stamper artist handle. And take the second one and do the same. And bring that one on here. Just enough to cover the bottle. So we want the top covered and smooth it down so there's no wrinkles. And then the lastly, the third one, we do exactly the same. Take the rest of the tape off the scissors and pop that one on there. And take about a third off here. And for this one, whoops, a daisy, stuck too soon. We're not camera sliding, are we? And smooth all of those wrinkles out as you go. And again, use your um, spreader here to push that down securely. And this is, I'm going to be gutting this. So the layer that I'm going to be using is the outside of the frame. But I will start with, aha, uh -huh. there we go. I've just taught you how not to do it because we can't get in there. But I haven't allowed enough space for this to come from the bottom, but all is not lost because we can still gut the center of this. Just gotta find my knife. Now I have a craft knife here. This is a um, self heal mat. So I'm only going to see the outside frame. Remember when we put this on the top here? you will only see the tiniest of borders. So what I can do with my knife is to take this out from the edge. Take all of this out, leaving enough room where your punch is going to go. It's good to know that you can do this if you needed to. Okay. So my three green bottles will still be punched and I can now get closer to it and actually punch those out. Making sure that's lined up in the middle. There's one. There's two. And then there's three. So we've just gutted the center out of that card. Because I'm using green, it makes sense to use that. I won't need this piece now, but what would have happened would be that would have been left in the center there. Okay, so I have three green bottles to add to my collection to use on another project. And this is just gonna leave me a tiny little border around the outside there. So I take my Tombow. Yeah, you've got 10 green bottles, absolutely. Had to be done, didn't it? But as I'm gutting the middle of my card, get this one to flow. As I'm gutting the centre of my card, then it, it just makes sense to do it. I'm not using them on this project, but believe me, you will see this coming up on another one. Just gonna take a little piece of scrap card. Scrap paper will do. When I was trying to squeeze that out, it's come out a little bit fast on the corner. 
So I'll just take a piece of scrap paper and just bring that in from the edge. Okay, that will be fine. Into the bin so I don't put glue on everything else. Turn that over. And we have that little board around there. This is the shiny side with the tape, so I will turn that over. Don't want remnants of tape on there. I hadn't allowed for the fact, I thought my card was a good size to be able to get the punch in, but I hadn't allowed for that. But I still have a nice green board around there. And I still have three green bottles cut from the center of my card. So, um, let's carry on with this. Put the lid back on there. I think I did. So, around the edge and down onto my card. I'm gonna put some other 3D on there, so I'm gonna put this one flat. Just a little scribble in the middle. And then pop that in the center. On here. Like something there. Like so. Okay, it gives it a nice little border around the outside. And then we're ready for our bottle. So now we can decide which one we like, whether we like the lighter one or the darker one. We did thump these um, fonds around the edge here a little bit darker, but I don't think it's made that much difference actually. So we have this one, which is the darker one, or this one, which is the Orchid Oasis. I like both. We can't have both. I think this one actually, mm, no, I, I will stick with this one. So we'll pop this one down the side. Um, these edges will, the center here will adhere to your card. Okay, and the edges, I just go slightly down the very, very outside edge with Tombow just a tiny little bit it is literally just catching the edge okay uh, we'll take the edge of the tombow just take that down just the minutest edge here just so it takes a hold don't worry about the top because that's further away okay now we can line this up on here where we'd like to place it. We press on the center. We maybe another time I'd probably use double double layer of my dimensionals down the center there. But these edges just need to be touching. Okay, and the foam pad at the center there will hold that upwards. Okay, so I'm going to bring that on there like so. So you can see that from a side view and the bottom you can see that there's a little arch in there and that it's shiny like a glass bottle would be okay so that's that one finished i have brought on the ribbons these are the ribbons from our five new in colors they are lovely and shiny glittery beautiful they're not 100 percent perfect matches um, but we do have the two in question we have <laughs> the edges tangled over there this is the starry sky and this one is the orchid oasis i think i'm going to use the orchid one tonight so that is that one i'll get the others out of the way uh, it all seem to be unraveling on me so i'm going to tie a quick little bow with this just over my fingers here a bunny ear on this side and a bunny ear on that side and cross them over okay now before I pull that tightly what I'm going to do is grab a glue dot one of our little mini glue dots and with my tweezers I'm going to take that off there whoops off. Roll it into a little sausage if you like, just so it comes narrow. And then I'm going to place that in the center of that bow. Okay, as we squeeze that through, it will actually tighten and it should hold that knot where I want it. Okay, it's just in the center of that knot. Okay, you do have to be careful with these ribbons because they do shred. 
they do um, feather out. Okay, so there's my little bow. Chop off the ends, both sides. Get that out of the way. And this will be sitting on top of my bottle here, either on the top or down around the neck. I'm gonna put this one around the neck and another little glue dot just to hold it in place. Rolled into a little sausage. I use the back of my tweezers, but you could use the back of your take your pick tool. As it's shiny, it will stick on here nicely. I've put that on the neck of the bottle and then this will attach on here like so. Okay, it's probably better to trim your tails afterwards so that you can level them up nicely but the, the this ribbon will actually fray a little bit so you've got it will spread out so do be careful with it there we go so all we need now is a greeting a sentiment now i think i'm going to be using the sending a message sending a little message um i wanted to find a die that was going to fit now when I did the one the other day, I did use these new dies. They are stylish shapes dies. Just excuse me a sec. I've got a little froggy in my throat. <clears throat> so these are really pretty. This one works perfectly for the sentiment. So I am kind of inclined to use that one again. Um, the other alternative I would have gone for would be the oval punches the double oval the double oval will work nicely on the scallop one but it won't fit in the center and i do like to have that with a double mat so we're going to use this one and another scrap of card and stamp that sentiment i think to continue my green theme coming through i'm going to stamp in green the garden green that little edge just accents but that'll be nice to have a a green and brought through again. I'll leave that open. And I'm just going to cut this roughly around the outside. And then I'll cut my greeting out. I'll move that out of the way and come back to my mini big shot. Now I mentioned on Sunday that there are offers in the um, annual catalogue on the page that's got the mini cut and emboss machine there are offers with three different stamp sets where you can buy it as a bundle and you can get your 10% off the mini big shot with your bundle it's an extra 10% so that's definitely worth having a look at if one of the stamp sets mentioned in there is one that's on your li wish list okay. I'll take that one off there there go. I'm loving these already. I've only had these a short while as well on my last order. And they have such beautiful stitching around. You've got the stitches all the way on there. It's lovely. So just a case of where I'm going to position this. I have a bigger card this time. So I, last time I put it over the bottle, but I've done that work to create that. I don't really want to cover that up. So I think I might be inclined to. Something that I do like to do actually is to have a straight edge on my card. So I think I might do that this time. Have a straight edge down one of the sides. Where shall we go for? We could go right there and just have those tips coming in. Or we could go that side. Decisions, decisions. I think it looks better in the middle, it really does. Because we've bowed that in the middle, I'm going to put the dimensionals just on each end. So I'll find those back again, wherever I put those. Mm -hmm. So my stamp and dimensionals, I'll just put one at each end on that side and on that side. And then that will straddle the middle section. curve that slightly just to mould with the bottle 
I think I'll bring it down a little bit, then you get to see a nice big chunk of the bottle. There and there. There we go. Now I didn't use any bling the other night, but I think I will on tonight because it's a bigger card. It's got more exposed. I'm going to use these ones. These that are the right clear rhinestones. <coughs> and I'm going to place some of these in the centres of the biggest flowers. Just a few, just to add some bling. There's three on there. I'll do the cluster in the centre. I'll do that one. Four. We know we like odd numbers. There we go. I think I'll do those ones. So I've got five on there. So it just adds a little bit of bling. Alternatively, or as well as, you could make another couple on there. And put one either side of the greeting. Just to take some of that plainness away. Okay. So there's our card for this evening. Um, the other one I mentioned doing, um, I will do... Um, on another video. Um, I was going to be using, showing you how to use the these shapes. They come in a pack of 10 and these are the shapes that cut out the um, oh, the bottle shape. Lost my words today. So um, how these would work is that you would have a punched shape and then this shape will actually go through the middle of that. There is adhesive on both sides of these. So you've got it on the inside and the outside. So how you do, you pull this off and you poke it through the front of your card. So this is the front with the dome. And then you can peel this off when you put your backing on. Okay, but I have a few ideas for that. Hi Shaz, lovely to see you. Um, the back of these, um, there's various ways you can actually attach these on and various fillings you can do. I have a couple of ideas for this, so that will come in another video um, later on. But these are gorgeous shapes and I had to get a couple of packs of these because I think they're going to be popular. So I've taken one out just to show you today. I haven't forgotten. That's on my list of future videos to make for you. So if I go back to the other card I have buried... So this was the one from um, Sunday evening with the gold layer. This gold leaf on here, the layer on here is beautiful. Um, and just a hint of the, um, oh, petal pink. I have to think which colour. And I've done this similar to this, um, but I didn't want to put the sponging around because I wanted it to the, the glossy on here to take um, precedence over that. And also it's a slightly smaller um, shaped card, but it's lovely with the bling on there and just bring that up to the camera. There we go. Shaz, I think you were on on Sunday, weren't you? So you saw my Facebook Live. I love these note cards, as I said, with the envelopes. And your envelope is off the camera here somewhere. I've put them all out of sight. You wouldn't believe the desk beside me, how much mess you can get into. My gems have all scattered out of the box. I can't see the envelope whatsoever. I want to bring that back on, show you complete. It can't have travelled far. <laughs> it is crazy. Anybody else have cra crazy crafty days like this? So there we go, there's the back of the envelope found it so there is your finished card so imagine sending that to somebody with the address on here um, just so beautiful having those together absolutely love them and there's the back of the envelope so you know you're getting something special as soon as you see the envelope okay so I hope you like that tonight and I've just got a sticky mark on there so I use my um, sticky rubber just to get that little edge off there um, a nice soft rubber will do. Stampin' Up! don't sell these anymore, sadly. Um, adhesive eraser. Um, but you can use a soft pencil rubber. Don't you, I never ever would recommend you using the rubbers on the end of these type of pencils. That camera's sliding again. <laughs> I will get this fixed. And 
we will be still slightly look at it it's been the stand has been the, the pad and the stand has been used for ukrainian lessons today so it's um yeah it's been moved about a little bit anyway i'm nearly finished now so um yes so i wouldn't recommend using these rubbers on here they tend to be mucky they tend to be very hard and you're more likely to scratch the surface than get a nice clean um eraser these this is a very old one but it's like a plastic rubber um and it's very very soft and clean so use something like that have a special rubber that you just use for white craft projects like this okay so bring it back to me and move the camera across and say cheerio for now and thanks for joining me um lots more to come as always um, and look forward to seeing you again soon. So if you, um, I've reminded you about the, um, the mini cut and emboss machine, the five in colors, there is an offer on at the moment. I'll just bring those ink pads up to the camera so you can see. These are our five ink, um, in color colors. That way on the, to the camera, there we go. Um, and there is an offer at the moment if you have a long wish list and wish to sign up as a Stampin' Up! demo, there's a whole collection of in-colour materials that you will be able to have for free in addition to your um, starter kit, which is £130 of your shopping list for just £99. So if you're interested in knowing more, then please just send me a message and I'd be pleased to help you. Okay, gorgeous new in-colours. I love them to bits. Um, lovely as a collection together. So I will say cheerio for now and see you again if you're with me on Sunday evening. And any requests, then please let me know and I will try and build them in my schedule. So bye for now.